If there's a toast for you now, uh, may the roof above us never fall in and us beneath it never fall out. <laughs> I have to do a Scottish song this time. Here's one called Caledonia. Because the Scots, I'm sure there's people here of Scottish heritage and, and St. Andrew's days, just gets passed by unremarked upon. So my heart goes out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Caledonia is a beautiful song written by Dougie McLean, who uh, was actually in France when he wrote this. He was homesick and put the song together. It's interesting, Scotland is going to have a, a vote in, in June of next year on independence from England. And the date was chosen by a man called Frank Salmon, who's leading this initiative. And he, uh, Scotland has a degree of autonomy, and he's availing himself of that, and he's going to have votes for 16 and 17 year olds. And the date of the vote is the commemorative of the Battle of Bannockburn, which was in the 1300s, the last time the Scots beat the English in battle. I suspect he's also going to show Braveheart on television for a couple of weeks. Before that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be rather interesting to see the outcome. I mean, uh, Scottish folk that I spoke to there, more my generation, are concerned about national defence and oil and uh, other important issues. I don't know if 16 and 17 year olds would have those concerns. It would be very interesting. Because the people uh, watching this assiduously will be those in the north of Ireland who are studying this very closely. Watch and win Baron this time next year, I'll tell you what the outcome was. Mm -hmm. No, next year won't happen by now. No, no, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's in 2014. Yeah. Here we go, Caledonia. <laughs> The changes that have come over me These last few days I've been afraid I might drift away I've been telling old stories, singing songs That make me think about where I have come from And that's the reason why I seem So far away today Oh, let me tell you that I love you And think about you all the time Caledonia, you are calling me, now I'm going home. If I should become a stranger, know that it would make me well and sad. Caledonia has been everything I've ever had. that needed proven, lost the friends that needed losing, found others on the way. I kissed the girls and left them sighing, stolen dreams there's no denying, double hearts and times with conscience flying, somewhere with the wind. Oh, let me tell you that I love you, and think about you all the time. Caledonia, you are calling me, now I'm going home. If I should become a stranger, know that it would make me more than sad. Caledonia has been everything I've ever had. When sitting here before the fire, the empty rooms like a forest choir Flames of cool don't get any higher They're withered now they're gone But I'm steady thinking my way is clear I know what I must do tomorrow Hands are shaking, kisses flowing I will disappear And let me tell you that I love you And think about you all the time Caledonia, you are calling me, now I'm going home. If I should become a stranger, know that it would make me well and sad. Caledonia has been everything I've ever had. Caledonia. 
the gold, yeah, it's been everything I've ever had. Travelers. Uh, a friend of mine who was a traveler of some renown passed away a few months ago. His name was Don. Uh, his first name it confuses people over here. In Ireland, it refers to your nose. His, uh, his name is the Pecker Don. And uh, he's a banjo player, and uh, he was from his father, and grandparents, and great grandparents. They were all musicians. So he was uh, a musical, from a very musical family. He also played the fiddle. And he played a banjo with a little piece of plastic wrapped around his finger, and he played like this. An uh, interesting man, I met him when between high school and college, and I travelled with him for a summer, and I got to know the travelling community in Ireland, who are generally despised by the settled people. They live totally different, separate lives. Lately, the travellers are starting to integrate a little bit more into society. There's a graduate of the College of Servants in Dublin, and there's another fellow, graduated as an attorney. Uh, this is what we need more lawyers, but he, uh, he illustrates the fact that they're making some inroads into society. Uh, in England, they're classified as a separate ethnic group with certain legal protections, not so in Ireland. But the Irish government was obliged to uh, make greater efforts to reach the children to help educate them. The women in the traveler culture are much more inclined to change than the men. Uh, traditionally, their craft was tinsmithing. There wasn't a house in rural Ireland up to the 1960s. They didn't have an abundance of tinware and lighting fixtures before electricity came. Buckets, basins, churns, all of that kind of stuff. Even cups and saucers are made of tin. And tin, of course, over time wears down and their main occupation was repairing or jobbing, as they called it. So a large group of travellers would arrive in a town, maybe two or three families, they tend to have large families of children, and two or three families in their wagons would arrive in a town. The men would sit on the village green and sell their wares, and the women would go door to door with baskets of basic household notions that uh, weren't available readily in rural Ireland. They'd have things like clothes pegs, and knitting needles, barrettes, uh, religious pictures, rosary beads, clothes pegs, and string elastic bands, stuff that we take for granted to get them the five and dime. They didn't have its equivalent in Ireland. And then in the 60s, of course, the country started developing and further and the stores opening up and plastic replacing tin and so forth. So their economy, in a very short space of time, was pulled from under them and they moved into the cities then and up oh, the government started to notice them. Prior to that, they lived underneath the radar. Anyway, my friend, the Peckerdon, uh, was a great character, he introduced me to a lot of these show people as well, fellas who would swallow chains and swords and have bull whips and pluck cigarettes out of people's mouths, and guys who tore telephone books in halves, and uh, another fellow would lay in a bed of glass and have people stand on his chest and you could actually get the glass crunching as oh. well. Nobody said it would be pretty. <laughs> and he would stand up and show back. It's all physics and, and uh, a little bit of chemistry maybe. Anyway, here's a song. Uh, the Pedro wrote, it was very, very popular around Ireland, it still is, I think, it's a song called Sullivan's John, about a settled fella who runs off with a band of tinkers, and uh, here's his story. <laughs> Cafe with her neat baby behind on her back strap on. She did an old ash print held in her hand for to drive her donkey on. Inquiring at every farmer's house as along the road she passed. Oh, it's where would she get an old pot? 
to mend her that's where could she sell her ass? All I heard of a fair in the county Clare, in a place they call Spansel Hill, where my brother James got a rap of the hames and poor Paddy they tried to kill. They loaded them up in the nurse and cart, while Kate and the baby looked on. Oh, bad luck to the day I went away for to join with the Tinker Band. Sullivan John to the road to God, far away from your native home. You're gone with the Tinker's daughter, far along the road to Rome. Sullivan John, though you won't stick it long, till your belly will soon grow slack. As you're roaming the road with a mighty load And the doodle box on your back